Hello, everybody. This is Noah and John, and we are from Urban Digs, and it is Friday. So you're going to get your weekly Manhattan market update. John, we got a very important one to deliver today, especially if you are a buyer, you want to listen to this. Let's start with supply, Johnny. 7,552, ticking higher, but a non-event in my mind. Show me that chart. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's 2% higher. It's tracking exactly where it was last year. This is a very seasonal number, Noah, and it's frankly underwhelming for a busy season. I agree. This is very seasonal and there's nothing macro that's going on with supply that's telling me to worry about anything. It's simply doing what it's supposed to do this time of year. Johnny, let's shift to demand. That's a different story. I think there's some macro going on there. Pending sales, 2,814, trending lower again. Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, we're still in reset mode, down another 3% this week. We've been down roughly 18 out of the last 20 weeks. And as we were heading down, you can kind of see where those 2020 levels are, 2019 levels. We may start to see a bit of a bottom around there. However, that's still weeks away. Yeah, I like that reset mode comment, John. That's exactly what pending sales is in. And I think it's going to continue to be in there for another month and a half or so until it finds its way. And if you take into effect that supply is rising and pending sales is falling, that gives you a market pulse a market pulse chart that looks like this. And this is a leverage indicator. This is not price action at all. It's a leverage indicator. It's telling us when buyers have the leverage, when sellers have the leverage. We like to look at the direction. And Johnny, we have to point out right now, for the first time in a very long time, this is now in buyer's market territory. Buyer's market territory. We're nowhere near the pandemic, but this is the first clear sign that buyers, your time is now. Yeah, I mean, this is something we've been talking about for the last several months. I'm glad to see it's here. I mean, in terms of, uh, we talked about a window of opportunity open for buyers. This is that window. It's been open for a little bit, but now, I mean, if you needed a, a reason to kind of say, hey, it's a buyer's market, it actually is a buyer's market. Yeah, and I would just point out where this thing goes from here. There is history that tells us, if we look at this chart and we look at all these different spikes right over here, um, in October, right around mid-October, that is supposed to do one of those types of things. It's supposed to bottom and turn around with the seasonality of what's going yeah. on. So if, if I'm a buyer right now, you're in that fearful part where it's still going down, and that's an optimal, optimal time to take advantage of this market before this turns around and goes the other way and the leverage advantage goes against you. Interesting. Johnny, let's go to the weeklies, see if there's any clues over there. I'm looking at supply, 412 things, ticking higher. Show me that chart. You know, it's 5% higher, no, but it's exactly where it was a few years ago, right? 2019, 2020. I mean, it's spot on to those levels and it kind of goes back to that original supply chart we showed, which is basically seasonal activity. So not a lot of new listings in inundating this market at this point. Yeah, I'm not looking at supply. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Supply is just doing its little seasonal thing. It is a non-event. It is noise. It is distracting. What I am looking at is contracts signed, the bids, and what the buyers are doing. 161 deals signed in the last week. That's ticking up. Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, 161. We're up two and a half percent, as you said. And this is again, look at it right on the same mark, right on the same lines as 2020, 2019. It's contract signs. It's pretty much right back to seasonal trends in line with where weeklies are on the demand side. So that is what's going to help kind of, you know, balance out that market pulse. So even though it's a buyer's market, it's not a very, it's not the same market as it was in 2020 when it was the last time it was a buyer's market. Yeah, no, the the depth of that of that downturn was definitely more severe than what we're going through now. And I want to just point out what's going on because I'm looking at one month. Okay, John, I'm looking at one month. One week is good, but it's not a trend. Make um, one month. You got some data in it. 683 is our one month level. And if I go to this contract activity chart, I love this contract activity chart. The blue line is actual deal volume. The orange line is the historical average. Where are we supposed to be? That number is supposed to rise up to 950, okay? I just put that little extension right over there. It's supposed to rise up to 950. We are at 638. Now, I'm not going to get nervous just yet, Johnny, because it's the first week of October, and I know that the second, third, and fourth week of October ramps up and deal volume comes up. So that right. will change most likely. But what my concern is right now is where we end this month. OK, because look, we're either doing a couple things. Either this is going to go above the average and we're going to go right back to the good times. This is either going to go at the average and kind of stay the way we've been the last few months, reset to the average. Or this is going to start to go down and maybe separate from the average. And you're going to see a little bit of a spread, a negative spread between where we should be 
and a lower level lower. And that is what I'm wondering about because everyone asked me about price action, John. And in my opinion, I think two thirds of this story are already booked. We already have one leg in down two to 5%. I have to wait for data from July, August, and September. That's your second leg up until present. That's the second leg. That's Q4 and Q1. That'll mm -hmm. be pressure to the downside. Any deal that happens from this point on and forward is going to be Q2 stuff. And I don't know where that's going. Either we're going up, down, or we're staying where we are. And that's what I'm looking at to define what's going to happen, Johnny. Yeah, thanks. And I think that you're exactly right. So if you take that market pulse chart we just talked about, right? That's not prices, that's negotiability, right? That's what that is. And if you go back to the contract sign chart here, right? The the too long didn't read version is that when that blue line's up, prices are tending to rise. When that blue line is on par with that orange line, prices are kind of moderating in the same range. When we start ticking below that line meaningfully, that's when you're going to start seeing price declines. And that's kind of what we saw, right. you know, quarter to quarter. We saw that third quarter versus second quarter. So we saw those declines come in, as you said. So the question is, and we're going to be tracking this like a hurricane tracker, you know, where is it going up, up, down compared to where we are? So, you know, going forward, thinking about prices, it's all about tracking that contract activity. You're exactly right. Yeah, we got to watch the bids. Um, it, it's going to be a complex cycle, Johnny, but we are all over this. And I promise you, we're going to give you um, guidance and we're going to look at the data and we're going to do this together and we're going to navigate this thing. Thank you, John Walker, for doing all that data and showing us all these beautiful charts. I am Noah Rosenblatt. We are both from Urban Digs. Don't forget, you guys got questions. We got answers. Please visit our forum right down here. If you want any of the charts we talked about, it'll be right over here in our premium report section. Other than that, this has been your weekly Manhattan market update. Catch you next time.